Did you know that as of the 10th of March 2021, pharmacists have now been included on the UK shortage occupation list? I know. <laughs> what does this mean? Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Faith. I am here to make a video that has been, I feel like a lot of people have asked me questions about, so I've decided to just, you know, make one video. So if anybody asks me, I'll just direct them. So this is actually going to be a series of three videos. So one of them is going to be like an intro. The second one will be more informative and the third one will be more like a Q&A. So I'll give the opportunity to ask questions. So if you can think of any questions while I am going through this first video, please pop it in the comment section below. And yes, I will be making sure to answer as much questions as possible. I might bring on one of two of my friends who are in the same profession so we can answer the questions as well. Um, depending on availability and depending on coronavirus. So we just have to see how that goes. But yes, today I am here to talk about my profession. Fun fact, did you know that as of the 10th of March 2021, pharmacists have now been included on the UK shortage occupation list? I know. <laughs> what is the occupation mean? list is an official list of occupations for which there are not enough resident workers to fill the vacancies. So it means that in this entire whole of UK, there are not enough pharmacists to fill vacancies that there are in the UK. And I think this is largely because the NHS is quite inundated at the moment and pharmacists are a crucial part mm. of patients' um journey through the healthcare system so and nowadays pharmacists are taking up more and more roles to or relieve the burden on gps and doctors and other healthcare professionals so we're now needing more and more pharmacists to join the workforce to sort of make sure that the nhs the healthcare journey is a smoother journey so this video is directed to my nigerian pharmacist or if you know anybody who's a pharmacist and you feel like they need to see this please share this video with them so this video is mainly directed to my nigerian pharmacist and it it is basically telling you how in this climate that we're in where everybody wants to jack bar from nigeria this is one of the ways that you can jack bar okay so if you're interested just keep watching and i will share some information and leave questions below like i I'm said to start by telling you my own journey and how i got to where i am and what i currently am doing um, so I'm one of those Nigerian children that your parents will sit you down and tell you, look, you are going to be a pharmacist. My parents literally sat me down, told me you're going to be a pharmacist. They did ask me though, what do you want to be? And honestly, I was so young and clueless that I didn't know. So I welcomed the idea and I am grateful that I actually do enjoy what I do as a career at the moment. Right. So... I came to the UK when I was 16 after something's happened with my jam and I was just not lucky enough to go to a Nigerian university, which in hindsight, I'm grateful for because it opened up a realm of opportunities for me. So jam messed up. I was left thinking about what to do and I ended up being able to come to the UK when I was 16 and then I went to college to study a foundation course. So it was a science foundation course that led me to go to University College London to study pharmacy. The MPharm course is a four year course after which you go on to do your pre-registration training. So this is basically where you shadow a pharmacist for a year. You're already working, you basically work as one of their dispensers or members of staff, but you're shadowing the pharmacist and you're learning based on certain competencies that you're required to achieve and by the end of this one year training you go on to do your GPHC exam so the General Pharmaceutical Council registration exam which if you pass then you become a qualified registered pharmacy in the UK. I qualified in 2017 and I am going to be four years in practice this year. I currently I'm working as a pharmacist manager and I also am a pharmacist independent prescriber. So yes, in four years I've managed to climb up 
the ladder quite a bit and I'm grateful for the opportunity to and I'm just hoping that this video helps somebody you know if you feel like you want a jackpot if you feel like you just want a different experience if you feel like just let me go and explore what harm would it do if I just you know up and went and just went to see what my opportunities were like over there so i'm just going to be telling you exactly what being a pharmacist um is like in the uk but i will start by going through the different career paths of a pharmacist in the uk so stay tuned for my following videos that will tell you the process of transitioning from being a pharmacist abroad to being a pharmacist in the uk i'm going to split this into different sections so one is going to be primary care and two is going to be secondary care and the third one is going to be industrial pharmacist and the last one is going to be just other roles that i can think of so in primary care the, by, by primary care what i mean is your local community so a pharmacist role in the local community so the first thing you can do as a pharmacist in the local community is to become a community pharmacist which i am and i have been for four years um, so if you've got any questions about these, please leave them in the comment section below. I will be doing a Q&A video where I answer all the questions that I left as much as um, I can. So you can become a community pharmacist and a, as a community pharmacist, you serve your local community. And I will go into more detail about this in my next video as well. Um, so... As a community pharmacist, you can progress on to management. So you can either manage a community pharmacy or you can manage a group of pharmacies in an area or you can manage a group of pharmacists in a region. You can do a lot in management. Um, the other thing you can do is you can do a clinical diploma that just, you know, helps to enhance your clinical skills. You can also go on to become an independent prescriber, um, which allows you to prescribe medication to people who are in need. So as a pharmacist, ordinarily, you are not allowed to sign off a prescription or write a prescription. You can hand out over-the-counter medications or pharmacy-only medicine, but not a prescription-only medication. So... As an independent prescriber, you will be able to then prescribe medication. So that brings me to my second one, an independent prescriber. So as an independent prescriber, before you become an independent prescriber, you need to go back to school, actually. So you need to do a six month to a year's worth of postgraduate certification. Um, it's like a diploma is a diploma it's a pg cert in prescribing and after which you will be qualified to prescribe so as a prescriber you just open up a whole lot of different opportunities for yourself because you can go on to work in private clinics you can go on to work in aesthetics you can go on to work in gp practices and by gp i mean general practitioners or general practice so which is basically your local clinic um you can do a whole range of things as an independent prescriber. It can open up the opportunity for you to work from home if that's what you so desire. You can work online. You can do so many different things as an independent prescriber. You just need to be ready to go back to school for just a little bit more. Um, so that's another thing you can do. The other thing you can do is you can become a GP pharmacist. So you're not... Um, you don't need an independent prescribing qualification for this role. You can just be a pharmacist, but you would be working in the GP practice. So in the general practitioner's um, surgery or clinic or hospital, the little clinic that you have in your communities, basically. Um, and what you do here is just basically manage medicines optimization. You conduct patient medication reviews. You um, see patients with certain clinical conditions just to make sure that they're being looked after properly from the medication point of view. So basically just helping with everything related to medication and medication optimization in the GP practice. There's one more. You can be a PCN pharmacist. So a PCN pharmacist, PCN first of all means primary care network. So your primary care, like I said earlier, is basically all the different ways patients access healthcare in the local community. So a PCN pharmacist is a pharmacist that sort of brings everything together and sort of like works alongside all these different people that I've mentioned. So the GP, the GP pharmacist, the pharmacist in the community, making sure that patients are having a smoother process through the healthcare system in the local community. So as a PCN pharmacist, you can be involved in medicines optimization. You can be involved in regulatory roles that help to just regulate how all these different people are 
working in the community. You can also be involved in like clinical audits. So basically making sure that the clinical processes are being conducted properly to set standards and that they are ensuring that patients are getting the right medications, the right treatments, the right things they want in a timely manner and is reducing the risk of patients being sent on to secondary care, which I will now go on to. Pharmacists can also work in secondary care and by secondary care i mean hospitals so you can work in a hospital so this is a whole different world to the um, local community you can do your pre-registration training in hospital um, which is where most people tend to start their career off at in hospital and then once you finish your pre-registration training for a year you've qualified then you can go on to be a band seven pharmacist i don't know too much about hospital so i'll just skim over the top of it um i know more about community pharmacy because i'm a community pharmacist so i'll be speaking mostly from a community pharmacist point of view so in hospital you go um do your pre-reg training and then after that you can be employed as a band seven pharmacist and then from there on you can climb your way upwards you can go on to managing the teams in the hospital you can go on to managing the entire hospital pharmacy or you can go on to specializing so you can specialize in different different aspects of pharmacy in hospital so you can specialize in like endocrinology diabetes so many different things you can specialize in so hospital is a whole world of its own and if you've got any questions for hospital just leave it in the comment section i've got a friend that works in hospital or a few friends i will just ask them the questions as much as i can so yeah just put your questions in the comment section don't worry i'll do a q a video and i'll make sure all the questions are answered to the best of my ability um so Moving on from hospital pharmacists, you can also become an industrial pharmacist. So like I said earlier, you could do your pre-reg training in industry and in industry, pharmacists are involved in the manufacturing process to the packaging process of medication to making sure medicines are distributed properly. So there's so much you can do in industry. I can't answer too much on that right now, but if you've got any questions specifically for industry, please leave them below and I will be asking my friends that work in industry. So you can also become a research scientist if that's what you so desire. You can go on to do your PhD um, and you can just become a scientist that does research. And I, I know a lot of these people can be funded by the government if your research is something that the government needs for a particular period of time. So like during the coronavirus pandemic, pharmacists were involved in the process. So, yeah. Um, and... The other things you can do as a pharmacist, you can go on to work with like regulatory bodies if you don't want to be involved in like the clinical aspects of things. So you can be involved in like bodies like NICE, so the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, or the MHRA, Medicine and Healthcare Regulatory Agency, or you can work with Public Health England. So all of these different regulatory bodies, some of which I haven't mentioned, you can work with just to make sure you know the healthcare system is working well. All of these different places I've mentioned, they do need pharmacists to be involved. Um, to what extent is what differs, because I know the community needs pharmacists most. Um, but yes, there are, there are vacancies in all of these different areas and there are vacancies across the board. And it just depends on what you're after, what your ambition is like. Just, you know, go for it. There's so many opportunities. So I hope this has given you sort of an insight into what a pharmacist can do in the united kingdom now this i i'm just going to keep saying this this video is mainly for my nigerians you know this is a period where people are trying to jack well, like i said earlier so just shoot me your questions i've had a lot of it from people just messaging me privately but this is a time if you come across this video or if you know someone who needs to see this video if you know someone who knows a pharmacist just share this video with them if this is something they will be interested in then yeah. in my next video i will also be sharing the pros and cons of you know coming to the united kingdom as a whole and what you can get out of it and what the transition process is from just you know studying or working in the uk to possibly getting citizenship if that's what you so desire and i'll also be listing all the pros and cons of being a community pharmacist because i do 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 love my job <laughs> i love my job okay i love my job but there are pros and there are cons. They're definitely cons. So yes, just leave me questions and stay tuned for my following videos where I'll be answering majority of the questions. But thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for staying up until this point. Like, comment, subscribe and share this video. Share this video. People need to see this. Share this video, okay? 
and i will catch you in my next video thank you